Why does the sun light up Earth but not outer space? And that is a great question, of course. One uh, question that we've all struggled with for literally seconds until the very obvious answer occurs to us. And uh, just in case you are a flat earther watching, the very obvious answer is that the light need something to reflect off for us to to see it. Anyway, today we're going to look at the claims of uh, one of my favorite flat earthers, a TikTok flat earther, who is, funnily enough, almost never wrong. I know, check this out. There is nobody convincing me that that is a reflection of that. See, absolutely bang on. The moon is obviously not a reflection of the sun. It may reflect the light from the sun in the way a tree in a field will reflect the light from the sun. But nobody would say that a tree is a reflection of the sun. So well done, Flat Earther. You are 100% correct. The moon is not a reflection of the sun. Nicely done. I've got eyes. Correct again. The moon ain't a reflection of the sun, full stop. It's not even up for debate anymore. <laughs> like, how could it possibly be? It's not. Okay, now I mean, I'd argue that nobody was really ever debating was the, the moon an actual reflection of the sun, but um, you might watch that and think, Ab absolutely, she's totally correct. But in the back of your mind, it might be nagging you that maybe she's still confused about something. I get that feeling from this video too. But look at this, right? What do you think this big ray of light that's breaking through the clouds here is? What do you think it is? I think it's... Uh, it's a tough one, this one. Cheese. Is it the sun? I think it's the sun. Yeah. Final answer. Sun. I think it's the sun. I think so too, so I think we're right, this is the sun, this big beam of light that's shining through the clouds. Now, as happy as I am to have nailed that incredibly difficult question, I, I can't help shake the feeling that this lady's about to say something um, that is, is going to show that maybe we, we don't agree with each other. So we've agreed that that's the sun. So what is this? <laughs> What is that? I mean, I do, I do feel as if we've just answered that question, and we both agreed it was the sun. It's definitely not the sun. Oh, for fuck's sake! Now, I did say in my defence that she's almost always right. Anyway, let's check the comments out to find out what it actually is. Now, while it might not be specifically written in any of the comments you're about to see, uh, the subtext of all of them is very clearly, subscribe to Culture Cats, hit that button. Well, this guy here has seen it with his own eyes, and therefore, after looking at the sun with his own eyes, the most obvious conclusion he can make is that it's uh, maybe something to do with the simulator. This guy's absolutely adamant it's not the sun, but it is something to do with the elite, so I guess we'll all find out soon. This guy here has seen that object before, but not for a few weeks, and I can't figure out why. I mean, after all, he does head out every single day after dark looking for it. This guy also is adamant it's not the sun, and he wants to know whatever this object is, why would they hide it? Why would they hide that object that was so easy to film and zoom in on and so easy to see on that TikTok video? Why would it be so hidden? Some mysteries are just not meant to be solved, are they? Now, uh, our favourite flat earther here has recently put out a lengthy TikTok video in which she makes a number of claims. And true to form, she's not wrong about all of them. So let's watch the video and credit where credit's due. If she's got something right, we will give her a point and applaud her. And if she's got something wrong, then, uh, then we'll let her know. Let's start here. The pyramids are aligned to true north within a fraction of a degree. Correct. That's a good start. 
Earlier this year, scientists discovered eight gigantic spiral-shaped cylindrical structures descending more than 600 metres into the earth underneath the Great Pyramid of Giza. Now, this discovery should be the biggest archaeological revelation of our time and evidence that there is a hidden history. Now, no. Now, you may remember headlines about huge 2,000-foot-long spiral structures being found underneath the base of a pyramid. It did get quite a bit of media attention. But those claims have been called out as utter bullshit and have obviously not been published in a peer-reviewed journal for a number of reasons. Mainly, the researchers use satellite technology, SAR technology, which can only penetrate at most 10 inches into the ground. So it's a little bit interesting how they can make claims of structures 2,000 feet below the ground. And it's also interesting that a flat earther would be citing data that was collected using satellites in space. I find that interesting. And it's also interesting that one of the authors on that paper also said this. Yeah, in a paper called The Global Picture of the Alien Interferences by Dr. Corrado Malanga, one of the co-authors on the underground pyramid city, he said that aliens... Six-fingered aliens were abducting humans and then implanting them with alien active memories that would influence their behaviour. One of these aliens it was called a Lux Parasite, which is a light-being entity that parasitically attaches to the human soul, influencing its development and experiences. Now, funnily enough, I don't believe this has been uh, peer-reviewed and published but feel free to have a read of it yourself. You can see just how extensive this uh, this piece of literature is. In 1901, they pulled a device out the sea with 30 precision gears that tracked the sun, moon, planets, eclipses. It dates back to 100 BC. That's 2,100 years ago. It's called the Antikythera Mechanism. Have a look. And that was very, uh, very impressive for the time. But I don't think it's evidence of some kind of secret civilization that was way more advanced than we are today. After all, you can't even play Angry Birds on it. The Baalbek stones, they weigh 1,500 tonnes each. And in 2025, we do not have a machine, a crane or anything that could lift them and place them with such precision that they were all those years ago. And that is a really great point, because if you ignore all of the cranes that we have that are totally capable of lifting these, these huge stones, like the Labe Her crane that you see on screen right now, if we ignore those, then obviously we can say that we don't have any cranes capable of doing that. And to be fair, while shifting these huge stones was a great feat at the time, it is totally, totally inaccurate to say we've got absolutely no idea about how it might have been done. But still, it was an amazing feat, it is interesting, and it's thought-provoking, and it makes me think of, you know, more big questions, like this. Could clouds be made of salt? Again, some mysteries are just not made to be solved. Now, Tartarian architecture is everywhere. Domes, antennas, resonance tech. Where's this in our history books? We can't build like this today. Now, this point is, and it's coming to me, it's, how do we describe it? Um, this point is bullshit, utter, 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 utter bullshit. It's the most bullshitty bullshit that has ever been, ever been bullshitted. I think that sums it up. In part of her clip, when she's talking about these ancient buildings that we no longer have the technology to build, she shows Cologne Cathedral. Now I've been there, it's amazing, and there's a McDonald's just on the corner. Now, when I was in Germany, I learned two things. First of all, Germans are pranksters too. I learned never to listen to them when they tell you that Muttermilk is German for milkshake. Uh, I found out that the hard way in McDonald's. Anyway, the second thing I learned was that the building of Cologne Cathedral spanned over centuries. And this image here from the 1800s shows us the normal everyday scaffolding used to help build those magnificent towers. But our ancestors used frequency, light, magnetism, sound, and they built on energy lines with precision we do not understand. They harnessed the energy all around us, and they had technology beyond our comprehension in 2025. And this is obviously word salad, and again, you know, we hear the words frequencies and energies just being thrown around by people who obviously have no idea what these terms mean, and it just, you know, it's so obvious when you use these words out of context, like this. Oh my god. 
there's been a change in frequency. Wow. Now, there was a mud flood in the mid-1800s. You'll not have heard about this either. It destroyed evidence of a true history. Today, we see the buildings of the old world with full floors and doorways and windows underground. You don't build doors and windows underground unless they weren't originally underground. Just let me process that for a second. You don't build them underground unless they were originally underground. I think... Suppose she's right with that one. But ultimately, the appearance of windows and doors that look as if they're below street level isn't evidence of a mud flood. Obviously, that's bonkers. It's often evidence that street level has been raised. And this can happen for lots of reasons. Flood protection, sewer and drainage uh, installation. If you have a look at the picture here, this is the raising of Chicago. Almost a whole city was raised once. Go and check that out. You can read about the orphan trains in the late 1800s. Where did all the parents go? Well, they were orphans. It's not difficult to figure that out. Ask yourself why. Why were we not taught any of this at school? Why were these ancient cities deliberately buried? Why is science not talking about the coils that's been discovered underneath the pyramids? It's all bullshit and you are extremely gullible if you believe in it. Ask yourself why. Why isn't Google Earth actually real? <sighs> These questions are not even making sense anymore. Why is Google Earth not real? I've done... I mean, the real version of Google Earth is the Earth. I don't even know how to answer that question. Why does the sun light up Earth but not outer space? Now, before I go, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on this question. I did kind of skim over it at the beginning. And the reason I've got to comment on this question is because of this. This is the most bizarre comment section I have ever seen in my entire life. And it's got to be addressed. Stephen Johnson steps in with the correct answer. There is nothing for the light to hit it in space. That's why outer space is dark. We need things for it to reflect off so we could see them. That's a problem, the uh, flat earth in this video isn't convinced. So in the 93 million miles between the earth and the sun, there's no other planets, stars or space junk. Well, I can categorically tell you there are no other stars in between the sun and the earth. There is one star in our solar system that is the sun. Obviously, there are other planets and we can see them with the naked eye because they do reflect light from the sun. Space junk is too small. We can't really see space junk because although it's reflecting light from the sun, it's too small to see. Done. Jules Watts does point out that she asked if there were any other stars between the Earth and the sun. And, uh, yeah... Nata does seem to double down on that. Let's have a look at this one. There are definitely stars between us and the sun, according to astronomy. What astronomy is that? The secret flat earth astronomy that all astronomers are completely unaware of. It's not an empty space in between with nothing to reflect light like the comment suggests. Let's go again. There may be planets at times in between the sun and the earth. There are def definitely other planets in the solar system and when they reflect light from the sun, we can see them. If an object is big enough to see when it reflects light from the sun, we are going to see it. If it's too small, like little bits of space junk, we're not going to see it. But the light definitely needs something to reflect off and there are definitely no stars between the sun and the Earth. In 93 million miles of outer space, there's no stars between the sun and the earth. Are you serious? Yes, we're all serious. Everybody here is serious. Let's just say this one more time. There are no stars in between the sun and the earth. Okay, there are none. Oh, anyway, let's see if she replied again. I think that is that.